Hello, welcome. So we today are making a side dish to go with a main dish. It's coming from the Flavor Forks and Knives. It's called Manchurian Green Beans with Tofu. And here's this beautiful picture of glazed green beans covered with tofu, some scallions, and some chilies. We'll be making a few modifications, which I'll talk to you about as we go. And I have started, so in this case, my tofu was pre-cubed. That's what I had on hand. And this is meant to be browned on all sides. You're going to see mine is not incredibly browned on all sides. It's because my pan isn't going to allow for it. So rather than just keep burning off a little bit at a time and letting it stick to the bottom, I cooked it. It's browned a little bit. That's what it's going to be. <laughs> Um, and then over here, I've got a pan warming, a skillet, and it's ready to go as well. I can see the steam. I put a little bit of water in there just to be sure. And I've prepped some very large garlic cloves. So the recipe calls for two cloves. I'm calling this one a two because it's so large. And I'm making a double batch, so I've got two of these that are equally large. And it's gonna go in, just a quick press. Those juices get released down into the pan. And as soon as you do this, garlic is pretty sticky. And so you wanna be ready to work fast, especially when you're only putting that garlic into the pan. You wanna be prepped with a few of your next steps. Otherwise, you're just gonna have burned garlic in the bottom of your pan, which is sad. Nobody wants that. But I'm gonna go ahead and keep prepping this garlic. What this is gonna do to the green beans with this having its flavors released ahead of time, is attach that really great flavor to your green bean. It's so amazing, I just can't wait. Um, this also calls for some fresh ginger, and as it turns out, my store was out of the ginger I normally buy, and I used up the rest of what I had. So I'm not gonna use fresh ginger, I'm gonna use dry. Let me rinse my hands real quick. So, I buy my dried ginger in a pretty large container as I do with so many other things. And typically for every tablespoon of fresh, you would do a teaspoon of dried. So I'm gonna go with two. And this would also call for some red chilies, these little red skinny peppers you can buy in the Asian sections of your stores. I'm not using them. They are super spicy and my children would really be unhappy. So you can see, actually I'm going to give this just a touch of water here, so that, now if you were cooking with oil, you would actually put a little oil in the bottom of the pan and that's how you would saute. Uh, we are not using oil in our day to day, we're taking a, a break, so I do use oil for special occasions, um, but in the day to day, rather than having to keep track of like, oh, how much is in these kinds of things, this means that I'm eating vegetables. I can eat as many of those as I want, and I don't want to count. So, now there are some other things in here that might be questionable, like we're gonna use a little soy sauce, but that's a whole other story. So, this doesn't have to cook up on its own very long. There's gonna be a slurry, and garlic cooks really fast. So, what I have here are green beans that I've gone ahead and cut into one inch. You don't have to. If you don't have little people in your home, a nice big piece of garlic might be really fun for you. And when you add these green beans in, it's three quarters cup of water per the batch. I'm doing a double batch, so I have a cup and a half. So it's 12 ounces of green beans times two. And that one, though I often estimate, was exact. <laughs> and then I can let this go up a little because I'm no longer working with garlic, which it's kind of delicate, in my opinion. So I'm gonna let this start to cook up. And you're looking for these green beans to soften, but not to get so soft. That's the thing about really good Asian cuisine, is that the, the vegetables stay kind of fork tender, so they don't just fall apart in your mouth like a canned vegetable. Um, but that's a really difficult thing for people to learn. And if, like me, you cook in bulk a lot, it's actually really hard to do bulk without getting some of the veggies soft. So sometimes I have to do double batches. Now this is the slurry I was talking about. In here, there's supposed to be a quarter cup, for starters, of soy sauce. 
Um, I used a quarter cup and then half of a quarter cup. And because I have the gluten intolerance, this one is liquid aminos. Sometimes it's tamari, coconut aminos. But tamari, coconut aminos, liquid aminos, they're all gluten-free soy sauce substitutes. Uh, there is also cornstarch. It was supposed to be arrowroot flour, so there's four tablespoons because this is a double batch. Um, but I know that the cornstarch will create that silkiness, and so if I'm a lot of arrowroot, no big deal. And if I was out of cornstarch, I could use flour. There's slightly different textures, that's okay. Uh, what else is in here? There's a little bit of lemon juice. So there's two tablespoons times two of lemon juice as well. And that's making up our slurry. What we have left after that, four scallions, which I have just chopped up. My scallions are starting to get a little old. So these aren't as crispy as I would normally like them to be. And then I'm also sadly out of fresh cilantro. So guess what? Dried cilantro it is. See, the world doesn't have to end. We just keep working it out. But what's gonna happen here, so you can probably even see the steam starting to go on these green beans, and they really only need like three minutes before they're ready to go, is that's gonna start to give that a really nice kind of, it'd be like if I took it and put it in boiling water for like a minute, that would create a blanched. So we're kind of blanching it, actually. And it's going to actually accompany a dish that you may well know happens on the same day. I'll show it to you again. So this is a buckwheat noodle dish with a ton of vegetables in it. And the reason I'm making this extra is actually for the tofu. The way that I saw it when I looked at this recipe, it didn't have enough protein in it. So lots of really great other stuff, but I wanted some protein. So, in order to say, how am I gonna round out this meal? That's where this other side dish came from. Not necessarily because that one doesn't have enough vegetables. It probably has enough vegetables. So as it starts to boil up a bit, I'm gonna go ahead and add my slurry in, and I'm gonna give it another turn. So here's the thing, when you first turn this, your cornstarch or perhaps your flour might be a little hard, but if you just work it a bit, it's like slime. If you ever played with slime as a kid, you move it around, it becomes more malleable. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump that whole thing in, and that cornstarch or arrowroot flour or any other flour you're using is gonna thicken up the sauce so that you get this really beautiful texture on the ends. And once you get to this point, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you are close to your dish because as that slurry starts to thicken, you're gonna to wanna to be able to turn off the burner. So already I've got a, a little bit of steam that's rising, but it's not boiling yet. You can see the flecks of garlic in there. Um, just to say, if you had somebody who could tolerate the soy but not the garlic, you really could just take the garlic out. It's really a lovely flavor for those of us who like it. But for people who don't like it, not so lovely. I'm gonna turn it down all of a sudden because it's already starting to congeal. And as it starts to congeal, also I'm gonna keep in mind, personally, I know that we're not gonna eat this dish for several more hours. So those green beans, as they cool, are still cooking. There's no way to stop it, so I'm gonna rinse off the beautiful sauce. So you want to keep that in mind too. Wherever you end your cooking, it's not the end. <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and add in my tofu, which I have to kind of, again, because the goal was to brown it, I need to carefully get it off the bottom there. But place that in so that my tofu is also getting coated starts to make everything look so beautiful. Uh, I've mentioned this in others. I often keep my handles in the back. We have a lot of young children. So often little people come by and grab handles on stoves and whatever is in them gets pulled over. Children get burned really horribly. So it could just as easily happen to you though. You could walk by, your clothes catch on it, and the whole pot goes over. So when I'm cooking, I always turn my handles to the back unless I'm holding it, in which case I grab it, hold it, and then flip it back. It's just 
sort of like putting on a seatbelt for me at this point. So I can go ahead and turn that off. This has definitely done its job. And then I can add in those finishing touches. My, my scallion and my cilantro, which I'm sure there's a measurement that could be done. I'm not going to. I'm going to sprinkle generously around because I love cilantro. I actually really love fresh cilantro. But it's so popular in the stores. Sometimes they're all out when you go shopping. And I'm not the type of person that has enough time to go store to store to get what I want or to return to the store later on. So sometimes you live with what you have. Now again, if you were using the red chilies, these beautiful little red peppers, they're very spicy, I will warn you, especially like a lot of people will chop them doo -doo 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 -doo, just like the scallions were chopped. And so even small flecks can add a lot because you can't really separate the seed out from them. But that would add a beautiful red color as well. And so what I'll end up doing is just transferring this out of the skillet so I can wash it. But there is a side dish of green beans made rather simply and quickly, adding a little extra vegetable and protein and flavor to my meal tonight. So thanks so much for joining me, and I will see you again later. Bye-bye.